shuttle Atlantis left the International Space Station for the last time Tuesday and is now heading home as the 30-year-long U.S. shuttle program comes to a bittersweet end. Atlantis is scheduled to land in Florida tomorrow morning just before 6 Eastern time. And joining us from space this morning is the crew of Atlantis, Commander Chris Ferguson, Pilot Doug Hurley, and Mission Specialist Sandy Magnus and Rex Walheim. Good morning to all of you. This is a, a real treat for all of us here at CBS News this morning. Hey, good morning to you, uh, CBS. It's always a treat for us to be able to share just a little piece of the, uh, of the excitement of space flight with you. Hey, Commander Ferguson, let me ask you this first question. This is a historic final journey home. How has this mission been? How bittersweet is it to know that you're coming home on the shuttle for the very final time? Well, I'll tell you, we have had just a, a, an event-filled and packed mission. And, uh, you know, what I had, had kind of told everybody all along was that we were not going to fully appreciate the significance of the event until after the wheels had stopped. And just yesterday in the mid-deck, I was talking to Sandy about, uh, about the fact that, yeah, you know what, I really do feel like it's coming near the end. And I can almost sense uh, that final wheel stop call. And it's, uh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be an emotional moment for a lot of people who have dedicated their lives to the shuttle program for 30 years. But we're going to try to keep it upbeat. We're going to try to keep it light. We're going to try to make it a celebration of what uh, of the tremendous crowning achievements that have occurred over the last 30 years with the tremendous satellites that have been de deployed uh, from the shuttle and, all, of course, the uh, construction of the International Space Station. The future of the space program right now, I, I know everyone knows that the shuttle program is coming to an end after 30 years. There is no vehicle that is ready to go right now. Uh, where, where is the future of the space program for the United States at this point? Well, the future is bright. We're in a kind of a transition period, which is a little bit uncomfortable as usual, but what we're going to be doing is handing over the access to low Earth orbit, getting to the space station to and from, to commercial providers who are going to build rockets that will get us to and from the space station. That will free up uh, NASA to do the, the heavy lifting of the beyond low Earth orbit flights, to go to places we haven't been for a long time or ever, like the moon, an asteroid, or maybe Mars. So it's a kind of a two-pronged effort, and uh, while we get through this transition part, it'll be hard, uh, but we'll get there and we'll be going farther and farther and then going to new places real soon. Sandy, if I could just pose this last question to you, what's your message to all those people, the thousands of people over the years that have been such an instrumental part of the shuttle program as you now say goodbye to this program after 30 years? Well, you know, really the heart and soul of the space program is the people that work in the space program. It's a group of people, unlike any other the field, I guess, because everyone's so passionate and so dedicated and they work so hard, they take it to heart. And it's true of all the people that I've met in the United States who work in various aspects of the space program, but it's also true of the people who I've met uh, in other countries through my work with the International Space Station. I mean, there is a huge number of people worldwide who passionately believe in space flight and who dedicate their lives to it. And it's because of these people that the shuttle program was so successful for the last 30 years and we were able to do the amazing things that we were able to do. And it's because of these people that the International Space Station has been so successful and will continue to be successful. And the same group of people will, have, will carry forward their momentum and eventually get us out of low Earth orbit to these other destinations that Rex was talking about earlier. And before we say goodbye, Sandy, just one final question to you. Has anyone been giving you a hard time, the crew, maybe through emails or any messages from uh, Mission Control about your space hair, what zero gravity has done to your hair? Well, you know, usually for events like this, I like to leave it out because it illustrates that we are indeed in zero gravity. I mean, these guys have kind of boring hair, so it's not so fun. But they do, uh, they do get, give me trouble occasionally about the Medusa-like effect of it. <laughs> well, it's an interesting look, that's for sure. Hey, we wish you all the very, very best, and we thank you so much for taking the time and talking with us. This has been a treat for all of us here, and we're so proud of you, and we wish you safe return to planet Earth. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, as the space shuttle goes out of business, private companies are looking for opportunities to fill that gap, and Erica Hill visited one company that's now at the forefront of a new space race. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. That's one small step for man. For more than half a century, NASA has been pushing the boundaries. But today, all that changes. We can't just keep on doing the same old things that we've been doing and thinking that somehow is going to get us to where we want to go. NASA's focus now shifts to deep space exploration, leaving the job of ferrying astronauts to and from the International Space Station to private companies, a first. 
This is something that's going to happen. It's a matter of who does it and how long it takes. One of the lead contenders in the race, SpaceX, a company founded less than a decade ago by PayPal creator Elon Musk. Two, one. Last December, it became the first commercial company ever to launch, fly, and recover a spacecraft from Earth's orbit. But that craft was unmanned. Former NASA astronaut Garrett Reisman now works for SpaceX. How quickly does SpaceX plan to be able to bring astronauts to and from the International Space Station? According to our schedule, we intend to have the first test flights with people inside Dragon in three years. One of the company's main goals is to keep costs low. A single seat on the Soyuz, the post-Atlantis plan to bring astronauts back and forth, could cost the U.S. as much as $60 million. SpaceX plans to sell a seat in the Dragon capsule for just $20 million. The reason is, is, is that we're employing, uh, you know, current technology. Uh, we have also a very simple design that is both robust, which makes it more safe. At the same time, it makes it more cost effective. Still, the idea of making space travel profitable can be a tough sell. If there's a criticism out there among some of the old timers who have questions about this, it comes down to if you're a profit making organization whose goal is to save money, to make money, could that compromise safety in the long term? Reisman maintains the top priorities for SpaceX are safety and reliability. And for him, it's also a chance to keep astronauts flying. What I saw here was an opportunity to make a real difference and uh, to make a contribution to a whole new era of spaceflight. And it was very, very attractive for, to be part of that. Erica Hill, CBS News, Kennedy Space Center. And SpaceX says it, that it's also able to keep costs low by keeping their design simple. But you don't want anything to be too simple when it comes to space travel, especially point, if you're Chris. one of those people that's forking over a couple hundred thousand dollars to take that trip.